Hey, so today I wanted to talk about how I journal for shadow work, enlightenment, in awakening. So we all know that meditation is super important to um, being able to sort of ground ourselves, um, to open to things beyond our thoughts and to realize exactly what thoughts are, what thoughts feel good, what thoughts don't feel good. Um, and so once you have done that, Sometimes there are things that need to be thought about, um, but this has to happen with the same sort of focus that you're learning in meditation. And this focus is a hard thing to describe, but it goes by feeling. Feelings are your indicator of when you're focused. So how you feel after an awesome workout, how you feel after listening to your favorite song, that's um, when, you're, when you're in the zone. That's what you're going for. Now you either can write yourself into the zone by journaling um, or you wait until you're in that zone and then start journaling. Um, and how I do this and how it comes about for me now that it's something that I allow to happen. And so what I'm doing is I'm focusing myself into a place of noticing things of kind of pulling up things that had come into my attention again so that I can see how they connect. Um, and often this will lead me back into my past and it can happen in some really funny ways. So the important thing is to be incredibly open-minded um, and this means you need to let go of any thoughts about what's a distraction or what is a bad thing to focus on. There are no bad things to focus on. It is how you feel about it that is your, the indicator you want to pay attention to. Uh, your mind is making the judgment good or bad, so that's what we're going beyond. And when you do shadow work, when you see that it truly is love and good in your most embarrassing or horrific moments, had some sort of um, benefit to you or were pointing you towards something that you had missed at the time. And so you're going back and the duality of time is collapsing and you're seeing that releasing it and letting it go. That's the intention of what we want to do. Okay, so open-mindedness. <laughs> so the weird thing, there are a few different weird things that happened leading up to it that I'm not going to go into. Um, one of them was that life seemed to be kind of falling apart for no reason. And this was true in the last time. If you haven't seen my video on shadow work uh, that I did a few weeks ago, go uh, watch that again because that will give you a lot more insight into doing this, this journaling that I'm talking about. Um, you can journal for reasons other than doing shadow work. You can journal for manifestation. You can journal for um, enlightenment. Like I said, you can journal just to get yourself into the zone in general if it's something you enjoy. But ultimately, all of those purposes are going to sort of dissolve into one anyway. If you're if if things if things like flow like you intend for them to, so the color yellow and the desire to paint a hallway in my house yellow came up, and this hallway is where I intend to put my vision board or dream board. And I realized that the board I have currently is too small; it's not going to work. So. I had this sort of vision for my vision board to have a big one and I wanted before I hung something on the wall permanently, I wanted the wall to be yellow. And it was kind of an odd uh, color because the rest of the house is all done in white and like I love blues and grays and really soothing colors. So it was kind of out of the ordinary. Um, and things yellow kept coming up and kept coming up and kept coming up. And so what I learned from that is one thing leads to another. And when you're focused, when you get on a roll and when it's in a good place, um, magic happens. And so I started, I'm not sure if the connection between the color yellow is apparent, but connections started happening and I started journaling. And I had this incredible release from that and I was just in this amazing mood. And so I didn't think I had the time to do it, but I went ahead and bought the um, great big whiteboard for the hall and bought the yellow paint and the next day I painted it. 
The next day I was feeling awful and hated the color. I hated myself the entire time I painted it. And the next day after that, I, um, I was, I was noticing how I was really getting into the zone journaling and then I'd fall out of it and I'd just have to stop and like practice self-love and not get too wrapped up in the project, but just let it happen. And the next day, all of this shadow work came up that was super connected with the color yellow. There was this early embarrassing moment where um, I was a kid in third grade and I'd just gotten this new t-shirt for back to school and it was, the, I think it was, yeah, it was the 90s. And so smiley faces were a thing and so it had this big yellow smiley face on it. And um, it was probably a cheap shirt or something, but we had this free reading time. And so we were allowed to move from our desk to wherever we wanted to sit around the room. And so I decided that I would move from my desk and be cool and sit someplace. And then I noticed these girls laughing at me. And so I started getting really uncomfortable. So I moved back to my desk and they laughed even harder. And so I moved one more time. And then at that point, I realized that a thread from my shirt was coming unraveled and leaving a trail all over the classroom. And the connection between caring what people think, and I realized that I had huge burden overthinking happening um, with caring what people think. And so the yellow smiley face and I realized the girl, she was a friend of mine and so it hurt even more that I liked her. Um, and she, but she with this other girl just laughed at me so much. It was really like, really embarrassing. <laughs> and I realized that she, there's, she lives really close to a place that's had incredible synchronicity happened to it. She lives right, she lived at the time, moved away since, lived right there, and it's a yellow house. Um, and so then there was another embarrassing moment <laughs> when I was kind of in like fourth or fifth grade and I was um, kind of in the chubby stage and I wore this bright yellow t-shirt and um, we were studying the solar system and our teacher was kind of insensitive. And so <laughs> she decided that we were going to act out the solar system and that I would be the sun. And so she like, she, she positioned me and like grabbed my shoulders and pushed me across the room and put me where she wanted me to be for the sun. And she goes, the sun, so big and round and yellow. And so after that, I kind of like hated the color yellow, never wanted to wear yellow. And I didn't like smiley faces anymore. And so I realized like I had this desire to paint the hall yellow and like bring all these things up. And they didn't stop there. There were other things that came into my attention. The um, sign or symbol or whatever of cats came into my attention. There was incredible synchronicity with cats. And um, in my house, I can't, even, I can't tie things all together. The journal, it's incredibly like in detail how this all came out. Um, and you, <laughs> your fingers just start typing like crazy once you make these connections. It feels amazing. It, it feels, yeah, it's amazing. But anyway, so I was thinking of the um, sort of incredible challenge it was to renovate the bedroom in my house. It was previously an attic and the floor was all messed up. Um, and, and it was just this dream and I had to go through so much just to get that bedroom renovated in the end. Um, and when I was gutting it, like years and years ago, I found a bunch of old things in the walls. And the coolest thing I found were was this old like Victorian drawing of um these cats these sick cats and so I like searched all over the internet because it was cut out I was like was there text with this I have to know and there's just this feeling this intuition this like intrigue with these things and so you know you just like it's like your your own mystery story and so um, I, I had to ask, <laughs> I had to ask for help for it, but eventually people were better at 
search engines than me, found it in the, uh, it was quotes from Charles Dickens, which the story, there were a whole bunch of other stories that tied into this. And, but the main quote I took away from it was that, um, care killed the cat. And so I found out that long ago, it wasn't curiosity killed the cat. It was care killed the cat, like caring too much about what people think. And so this was like thrown into my face that I care too much what people think. Oh, by the way, here's the notebook I'm going from. I found this <laughs> just like, I don't know. I just happened to find it. It was my son. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to write my notes. In this. But anyway, so here's the last funny thing. And then I'll go back to being general. So carrots, so cats came up. And so then I remembered, um, so what provoked this too was recognizing that I have this intense fear of cities, fear slash love, because they really do intrigue me. Um, end of driving. And so I was going back to my memories of being in New York City and what a crazy mind altering experience that was for someone who had grown up and lived all their life in such a rural area. <laughs> and so <laughs> we were with my in-laws and my in-laws are really, really conservative. And they also really like food and they love to go to well-recommended famous places to eat. And I'm not like that at all. Like I was raised, we went on the short vacation once and every single meal we had at McDonald's. Like it's just like the quickest, cheapest place to eat. It's just food and that's that. Like you're there to see the place. And so my in-laws are completely different from this. And so they really wanted to go to Cat's Deli in New York City, which is famous. And I knew nothing about it. And I was um, pregnant, six months pregnant with my first kid at the time. And it took forever to get there. We missed a stop. And when we got there, it was packed, like crowded, packed. And I tried to stand in line and you're not supposed to have lunch meat when you're pregnant. So I had no idea what I was supposed to order anyway. I was trying to stand in line. I got bumped several times and Already, I was not in a good state, and I started to have a panic attack, and I started to cry, and we had to leave. So my husband left with me. My in-laws just looked at me like they didn't even recognize anything was happening. It was just weird. And um, that sort of traumatized me because I completely lost it. Everyone was looking at me because it was kind of a spectacle. Like, that, I'm not used to that many people. I'm not used to crowds at all, and this was this this ex insane example of them. And so Cat's Deli and the, me and my husband found out why it's famous. One of the reasons is that the, uh, when Harry met Sally scene where Sally loudly fakes an orgasm in the middle of the place, not giving a care whatsoever what anybody thinks. And everyone's just stares horrified. And then the, <laughs> this lady at the end goes, I'll have what she's having. That's the scene was filmed there. And so again, thrown in my face is you care too much what people think. So <laughs> that's how journaling can really get the message. Now, if you're just like, yeah, obviously I, we all care too much what people think. But once you see how it's tied so much to things, how things have been bubbling up, how you've gone down this direction. It's really an unforgettable insight and you realize how important it is for you. Um, and so um, you can't focus and not change reality. And so <laughs> Whenever you write something down, whenever you take note of anything, and whenever you write to focus and sort of hash it out and find out how it connects and connect, it takes an open mind. Like I talk about this stuff with other people and they're like, yeah, you can, you can come up with meanings, whatever meanings you want to come up with. Um, but when you go far enough down the road of awakening and you realize that reality is all we have so many thought filters that color a reality. What is reality itself? What is it? You whittle it down to nothing. And you realize that going in the direction you want and everything is love, that's all there is left. 
And so when you let yourself go there, um, it's very freeing. So also, um, where I said it's really important to be in the zone, I use music and music takes me back. So if I am thinking of a certain time period, I will go find music from that time period. I will Google the lyrics. And the cool thing about me, <laughs> I never paid attention to lyrics. I never really liked poetry. And since I've realized how incredibly profound those things are, and the meanings don't make sense until they do. They don't make sense until you have that sort of openness and that desire to know. Um, and so music, looking up old things from your past, just noticing where, noticing synchronicity, noticing how things tie in. All good, um, good, good clues to follow, so. Good luck if you try this. If you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, leave me a comment. I love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.